back to Jeff Kuenage live here at Citizen Television with the man himself, the Grand Mullah, Senior Counsel Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi, talking about the state of the nation. Keep tweeting at Kuenage Jeff at Citizen TV Kenya. Hashtag is JK Live. Now, Grand Mullah, before the break, talked about the president having so much on his plate. Does, where does that leave room for the Big Four agenda? Grand Mullah, let me ask you, Big Four agenda, very ambitious. By the way, before we get to the ambitiousness of it, can you name the Big Four agenda? Yes, yes. I mean, health, manufacture, housing, and then infrastructure. <laughs> <laughs> Three out of four. <laughs> I think I've done, as, as someone who, who plays really no role in those, yes. I think I've done well. You've done well. Three yes, out of four is good. Yes. You're right. Health, universal health, yes. uh, affordable housing. Yeah. Manufacturing, which is unemployment, blah, blah, blah. Fourth one is the one everyone always forgets. Food security. Right? Yes, but you see, I mean, I mean, those are four things government does every time, you know. There's no need really to make your legacy on that because, yeah. I mean, uh, food security is always there because I mean, planting food, I mean, that's, you know, the natural things to yeah. do. It's almost an obvious. It's an obvious thing. Healthcare, I mean, this government has invested a lot of money in healthcare. Maybe some of the machines are not working, yeah. but at least money has been spent. Right. So I've, told, I've said many times that if Uhuru really wanted to leave a proper legacy, he would have added rule of law, law and order. Yes. Because this is a country, I mean, all those four will disappear if there's no law and order, mm. if people are not fearing the law. If when you break the law, there is no consequence. That should have been his legacy. That yeah. should have been one of the pillars. But now when you say, build, I mean, Kenya has enough hospitals, for God's sake. We have hospitals everywhere. But yeah. is there medicine? Are there enough doctors? Yeah. Are there enough nurses? But let me ask you this, uh, Senior Counsel. Do, a lot of people just don't understand what this Big Four agenda is. They don't, understand, they don't get it. For some reason, it's not being articulated. Has it been packaged wrong? Not only that, you know, even in terms of conceptualizing, when or... I mean, it, I mean, Uhuru is perfectly okay for him to say that this is my agenda. But he hasn't sold to the people, you know, the yeah. grassroots, you know. Yeah. The people of Kenya have not been told that, you know, this is what it entails. Manufacturing, every constituency will have a small machine, you know, something like that. A small Joakali factory. You know, I mean, nobody knows what this is and uh, time is running, you know. Time is running out yes, very, very fast. And by the way, uh, most presidential legacies around the world are... are defined by one theme, one single issue, Kibaki infrastructure. He'll always be known for infrastructure. Now we have four in less than four years. No, there's no harm, I mean, if you have four, as long as you can deliver. But you see, in terms of, in terms of delivery, I mean, what, 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 is the, what, is the, what is the system, what is the mechanism that the president has highlighted to show that he can deliver the four? Yeah. Yes. You talk, okay, let's take... I mean, I think, I, I agree with you. I mean, if you will have built, you know, a dual carriage from Mombasa to Kisumu, yeah. I mean, that will have... I mean, you, don't, you will not advertise that. It will be so obvious in terms of its achievement. It will sell itself. That will sell itself. Or if you will have built a very tall building of 50 floors or mm. 60 floors, mm. that will happen. <laughs> <laughs> the cost of implementing the Big Four agenda. Come on, man. It's... We talk the monies we hear. No, no. I mean, it has been budgeted for. I mean, Kenya. I mean, it's there in the budget. Yeah. Now, now the the problem is how to implement and how to ensure that it is not stolen. Well, because that, you know, I mean, we are on record. I think it is Kenya who said, the president's yeah. chief of mm. secretary, chief of staff, chief of staff said that I think fifty percent or sixty percent of the budget is stolen. Eh? So if you put so much money in this big four and sixty percent is stolen. That's one hell of a stealing. Oh, goodness. It's called the big stealing, not the big four. No, unless you have, you know, unless you put in the infrastructure to ensure that it's not stolen. But you see, I mean, if 60% of the budget is stolen, I mean, this is a way, I mean, with all this money for the big four, oh, this will be one hell of a stealing. And then there's all talk about overborrowing. Over borrowing. I mean, you know, the, the president went around the country from Washington, D.C. to Beijing, and people were worried that 
he's going to sign more deals which will overburden us, no, the no. taxpayer. What's of a bad? I mean, the burden really is not the borrowing; it is the taxing. You know, I mean, we are, they are taxing everything. Yeah. This water included. Yeah, and the air we're breathing, right? I mean, I don't think there is. I don't think in in Africa. I think Kenyans are the most taxed people. And now they want to tax 1.5 percent of your salary to go towards housing. There's a lot of resistance. Absolutely, and why not? I mean, you see, why there is resistance to all these things is that even when you pay your tax, Kenyans are not confident that that tax will be used for the purpose it was raised. There's a good possibility that you know a state functionary or a bureaucrat somewhere may steal that money. Yeah. Yes, yes. Manufacturing. The president just yesterday at the Strathmore Business School, he says. We, we haven't been fair to SMEs. We've neglected SMEs. And these guys are the ones who can spur growth and employment. Actually, I mean, I was with a client of mine over the weekend and he told me that he has a small factory where he makes juice and water. And a month, he says he pays 2.5 million in power. What? 2.5 million. And small factory, you know, small, makes water, you know, distilled water yeah. and juice. He says, I mean, he's about to close and people will close because you can't afford 2.4 million power. every month. Every month. But even in my house, I pay 250,000. It's crazy. How much do you pay? 250,000. A month. Yes, I oh, don't yeah. have a, and I don't have a factory there in my <laughs> house. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. power is expensive in this country and uh, it's not, I mean, and I think basically it's the way they calculate. I mean, there's no system. I think they can inflate, they yeah. can deflate. Yeah. I mean, they can raise up, they can raise down. I mean, it's, I, I think they need, they need to do a proper investigation on how even peeling is done for power and gain. Did you hear the president yesterday telling the CS for Energy, reduce power bills? But in how many times has he done that? I mean, yeah. well, I mean, who has done this like three, four times? Every time saying that you must reduce power because when your power is expensive, you cannot be competitive in the manufacturing sector. No, you can't you be. Can't. You can't. Can his word be taken seriously out there? Can, can people take him seriously? Because he keeps saying these things and people ignore them. After a while, they ignore him. No, he's ignored and I think people ignore him and they will ignore him because there's no consequences for ignoring Uhuru's directive or Uhuru's wishes, you know. No. He, he, I mean, he doesn't, if he doesn't fire anybody, whom has he fired as a cabinet minister? The last time he has fired nobody. You can't, yeah, since last year, since about a year ago, right? He hasn't fired any cabinet minister. And it's not that they are performing, and everybody knows that they are not performing, and yeah. that's why the president is so annoyed. Correct. Yes. He said it but, himself. But, but can you imagine when he's in a cabinet meeting and we don't see how annoyed he is with their performance? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if he can be annoyed this in public, in public can, you be, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, some of them must be shitting on their pants. <laughs> But you remember what his dad used to do? He used to whip them in that cabinet room. He used to chop at them. Uru may do it during his last year, probably. <laughs> do you think a cabinet reshuffle is looming, you know, with all this talk? Uru rarely reshuffles his cabinet. I don't, I mean, I don't see why he should, he will do it. I mean, he rarely does it, but, but you see, this is his last time. I yeah. mean, this is his last time. He yeah. will retire after this. And I think if I were Uhuru, I would have picked, you know, the best. He has three, four more years. And make sure that, you know, these guys work so hard to ensure that at least people remember him and say that it was during Uhuru's time that this was done. Tell me something, Grand Mula. Okay, the president, he says this and it's not implemented. What about his deputy? Where is he in this whole scheme of things? Because if the president says something, the deputy is supposed to be right there with him. Everybody knows where the deputy is. Why are you asking me that? I'm sorry. Is, wh wh where is he? <laughs> Krabula, you can't leave that one hanging there, man. What do you mean? Tanga tanga inga? What do you mean? Well, I think the, I mean, the, the, the deputy said, that he will go where the president sends him. And we don't know where the president has sent him. <laughs> what are you talking about? What he says, he says, he says, Kandaya Moko. That's, he always says that, right? He'll do what he's told or he's, yes, yes. he'll go where he's sent. Yes, I think that maybe the president is not giving him enough briefs. But, 
but to be fair, I mean, the deputy president has been busy. You have seen the number of rampes he does for church, you know, yeah. building church, yeah. buying Bibles for church. Lots All of those rampes. Yes. Those are fundraisers. Yes, yes, I mean, he's connecting with the people, you know, the grassroots. He's with the grassroots. The deputy president is with the grassroots. Fundraising one side versus development the other side. Big four is supposed to be the big thing. And I think there's two... There's two no, no, but I, but I think the big four hasn't been launched officially. I don't think so. Come on, the guy's got less than four years. What official launch is he no, waiting no, for? No, no, we need a ceremony. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> we need a ceremony so that the president says that the big four, then, you know, he blows the whistle. Yeah. So that yeah. from time runs, we, we need a ceremony like that so that Kenyans can internalize, Kenyans can appreciate that. Yeah. The program for the peak four has started. Let me ask you this in a different way. Do you think the president and his deputy are reading from the same script this time around? Are no, they reading from the same script? I think to tell, we have to tell the truth. I don't think they are. They are I, I've said many times they are like, you know, you know, before divorce, you know, when you separate as a couple. Yeah. Every, you, you, you have not divorced officially. Mm. You, the marriage still subsists. But you lead your own life, eh? Each candidate a separate. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, there's some dating going on. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, well, both of them have found love. <laughs> New love. New love. Yeah. The handshake is one love. Yes, absolutely. And 2022 is another love. And you can see the realigning, right? Do you see the realigning? I think, I, I mean, I think there will be a lot of activities in this country. And you see, that now high energy activity will, will, will have effect on the big four. And that is something His Excellency Uhuru should be very conscious of. When there will be so much activity, whether it's a constitutional referendum or whether there is all this new love politics, I mean, that will have an impact on the big four. Yes. So it is in Uhuru's interest to ensure that the big four remains on the radar for the next three, four years. There's one big four we haven't mentioned is food security, right? The one everyone forgets. Remember Galana Kulalu project? A million bags. I think they produce, what, 10,000 bags? No, that's and they I spend mean, billions on that. Billions. I mean, that's, it, a, it's, that's, it's, a, that's, that's a total failure. I mean, I mean there's so many, you know, there's so many projects who have invested a lot of money that have completely failed. And we just move on as a country. We start new projects. Yeah. We start new slogans. This small propaganda. And life goes on. Yes. I mean, if, in terms of food security, I mean, I don't think, for example, the Minister of Agriculture has given a blueprint to Kenyans on how food security will be attained in the next three, four years. Yeah. Yes. This is just a high-sounding polemic, unfortunately. So these big uh, gender items, big projects, is it an avenue for big corruption? Is that just another way? Let's give them the benefit of doubt. Let's see. I mean, you know, uh, for me, I think the, the president must have, you know, a major ceremony to quick start these projects and say that the big four, I'm launching first food security on this day, and this is what it entails. So that Kenyans understand and have a marketing scheme in terms of what has been achieved and what has not been achieved. Yeah. Then he does something for health. Then he does something for manufacture, manufacturing, and yeah. it goes on. But n now, I mean, I think many Kenyans will agree with me that we have no idea whether this big four has been launched or not. We don't. Uh, personally, I don't. Yeah. Uh, look, we, we, and I'm sure you don't. No, I don't. Yes, yes. You, you, you spoke of health a moment ago, right? Universal health care for all. That's the big, you know, lofty words. Universal health care. But at the county level, it's a mess. But even in Nairobi, I mean, who can afford health in Nairobi? Kenyans are praying every day that their family members don't get sick. Yeah. And God is answering them. But if you go, even if you go to Nairobi Hospital, who, who, how many people can afford Nairobi Hospital? Exactly. It's more expensive than any hospital probably in this world. The service is poor. The doctors are poor. The machines are poor. And you pay through the nose. Yeah. Yes. And that's a private hospital. Yes, yes, Imagine yes. public. Imagine public hospitals now. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, it's, I mean, it's difficult. Life is difficult in yeah. this country. And yet, billions and billions are pumped into the health sector. Let me ask you this: Forget about the big four agenda. 
What if the president was to concentrate on just one? The biggest agenda of all, corruption. Yes, law and order, that for me. I mean, that's, that is the easiest and the most effective way to leave legacy. You know, ensure, I mean, the DPP is doing very well. The CID guy is doing very well. You need, you know, a functional court system where you ensure that a criminal case starts within this period and it comes to an end within this period. Mm. You know, in Kenya, cases, even a criminal case starts on and on and on, yes. five, six years. Yeah. But in any civilized country, including South Africa, I mean, there's a, there's a time frame. There's a window. Yes, yes. A case starts in, on first of the month, and by 15th, it's over. Because all the preparation has been done. There will be no adjournment. Every party brings their, uh, their, their evidence, and the case will be concluded. So if Uhuru wanted to have legacy, and there is so much. I mean, you know, there are so many people who have stolen public money. Yes. Uh, I mean, I will have started at Wilson, by the way. Eh? There are so many helicopters in there. <laughs> yes. Yes. That belong to individuals. That belongs to individuals. Uhuru, I mean, Hechi could have gone and said that this one, how did he buy this? Yes. And go on, go yeah. on. Yes. Like, Wilson alone, you can recover about 10 to 15 to 20 billion shillings. Wilson Airport alone. Alone, alone. Then it is easy. All these public officials, they live in houses that their salaries can't justify. Yeah. Uh, I know some people who are very, their salary is uh, 300, 400,000, and their, kid, their children attend you know, schools where it's one million a month yeah, at that time. time. I mean, how do you pay? Exactly. <laughs> and yet they refused a lifestyle audit. A lot of them were so, uh, were so against it. No, no, but you see, it's also, I mean... Uh, that is one weakness of the Uhuru's presidency. There's no stamina in his agenda. I mean, wh what happened to the lifestyle audit? Yeah. Even, yeah. The, even the judiciary, why don't we have a lifestyle audit of all the judges so that we know where a judge gets all this money? money but hold on. Yeah. We do a lifestyle audit on the parliament, Mo parliamentarians. Mo hold on. Monica, you have that sound bite uh, about lifestyle audits, right? Let's just take a listen. Take a listen to this. On top of the actions that we are already taking, Tutaanza sasa ile yambaya inaitua lifestyle audit ya maofisa wote wa serikali. Ndiyo wewe tunakuona haya basi. Hii nyumba, pesa, hii mshara, ndiyo hii, hii ulinunua na mnagani. Hii ulinunua na mnagani. Hii gari yambaya unapeleka na usijaribu kuweka kwa jina ya babi yako wao, mtoto yako, tutajua ni yako, ulitoa wapi. You must explain. Na ule wa kwanza kufanyua lifestyle audit ni mimi kwa sababu mimi ndiyo mfanyikazi number one. Sindiyo hiyo? Yes. Mimi alafu tuende kwa huyu, alafu tuende kwa governor, alafu tuende kwa masharia. Kila mtu aseme hii maisha unaishi, unaishi kwa njia gani. Sinina mna hiyo? Hii pesa unatoa, unatoa wapi? By the way, the who you he was referring to was his number two. Yes. Critics would say this is all bark and no bite. I mean, the president comes with a lot of good ideas in terms of things to do, but he's always he always fails in implementing. And you know, it's one failure after another, one failure after another. I mean, lifestyle audit. I mean, will have been a very good uh, program to undertake. Yeah, start with himself. Yes, so that he can account for what he has. And uh, you know, there's, there's a department at the Attorney General, uh, I think there's a lady called Mudoni Kaman who's in charge. Mm. I mean, they have so much power under a certain act, I don't have the exact title of the act, that they just need to write to government employees and tell them that you have this house, we are giving you a month to explain how you have acquired. Yeah. And within that month, if they don't, if you can't explain, the property can be seized. And yet... It's that easy. The law is that expansive, yeah. powerful. Look, when he makes announcements and pronouncements like those, do you, you think he's working alone here? Is he alone? Uh, he has no backup, no support. No, no, but, but you see, he's the president of this country. I mean, he can have, he can have an army of thousands of people in the office of the president who implement every word he utters. He's the president. Yeah. Ultimate power was, uh, Side in him, that he doesn't have that infrastructure, and I've said this many times, the president does not have people 
supporting people to implement his agenda. People who take notes when he's speaking right. and ensure that they implement. Yeah. I mean, the president looks like someone like Madaura, you know, what he was to yes. Kibaki. Correct. Yes, yes. He doesn't have that. He doesn't have and that. where's this cabinet that we keep hearing about? Where are they? Miss, where are they? Missing in action. So, 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 so the lifestyle audit yeah. is already over. I mean, I, I, there were people who were opposing it. You know, they should not oppose, oppose because I don't think the president even put infrastructure mechanics to ensure that it's implemented. And there are so many things the president threatened yeah. that have fallen on the wayside. So does that mean that his war, his fight against corruption, is it a non-starter? He's a one-man army, unfortunately. You know, a general without soldiers. And then again, we come back to, where's his deputy in all this? Again, you know, you, you talked about the separation. The deputy is around. <laughs> but you see, the deputy is the deputy of the president. So it's the president who gives you the brief so that you deputize for him. If the president doesn't give you a brief to deputize, why do you blame the deputy president and ask him where he is? You ask the president, what have you given the deputy? But they were a team. They were put there as a team. They're supposed to look out for each other. I think that I, my, my, my view is let us not make any judgment on this. I mean, there are so many things that uh, Kenyans thought will happen that didn't happen. And uh, there is still the president and the deputy president as provided for by the constitution. Yeah, but yes. a moment ago you talked about a separation. There's two. What we got, there's what, a married couple yeah. who's going, who looks like they're going their separate ways. You know, there are some things we can see and some things we can't see. Yeah. What we can see is that the chemistry isn't as good as it was, but there's a lot of things we can't see in terms of how they work. I was seeing yesterday when they were in Kikompa, both the president and the deputy president were taking notes very... You saw that? Yes. yes, yes. It's like they were writing this from the same... They were reading from the same... Sure, script. sure. Yes. Well, look, uh, let's go to the high-profile arrests, right? High profile, big names. It was done with a lot of razzmatazz, PSs, director generals, former governors. And then? Now, to be fair, where they are arrested, I mean, the, I mean, those cases are still going through the processes. I mean, hearings, some of them hearings have started, witnesses have adduced evidence. So maybe two, three years, we see the results of those cases. High profile arrests high-profile lawyers representing them. You see, the role of lawyers is very critical in any democratic dispensation. It's only some primitive people who complain about lawyers representing accused persons. But it's such an honor to represent a poor man, to represent someone who has some money, and to represent someone that who has no money. Because legal service in many jurisdictions actually are provided for by the state or for, many, for, for people even who cannot afford. So when someone can afford a lawyer and there's a lawyer appearing for him, why do Kenyans have a problem with that? Because if someone is being charged with alleged corruption or stealing, yes. which means they put aside some money that they stole yes. so that they could afford a high-profile lawyer, uh, some ethics there. That, no, uh, there's no, it's not the lawyer that decides the case. I mean, the lawyer disapproves the prosecution's hypothesis or the thesis. It is the judge who is neutral, who takes a salary. You know the judge is not paid by the lawyer or by the accused person. The judge is paid by the state. It's an independent judge. He will, look and he will hear the evidence. If the accused person is guilty, he will be sent to prison. If he is not guilty, he will be released. Don't blame the lawyer for representing someone who needs legal service. But sometimes there's collusion between there's, a there's judge. No, there's no collusion, there's no collusion. Oh. Th those are rumors. Those are, those are perceptions. I'm not saying there is no corruption in this country. There's a lot of corruption. Yeah. But there is no collusion like you know you conspire. Cases, I mean, there are many, you know, unfortunately, Kenyans don't know. There are many cases, the office of the DPP wins. There are many prosecution cases, uh, you know, there are many convictions they win. Mm. If you go to the Mil uh, Milimani court, mm. there's a lot of people who are sent to prison for corruption. 
but it's not those very high profile. But there are many cases, even the Kenyan Corruption Commissions, they get, they get a lot of convictions. But Kenyans don't know those, they are not highlighted. We just, you know, we, I mean, Kenyans only make noise when there's a high profile acquittal. Yeah. But there's the DPP and the Kenyan Corruption Commission win many cases. Would you ever represent someone poor? Like we, represent, we represent poor people every day. Only that we don't advertise. When you represent a poor man, nobody notices. You were very critical of the former DPP and DCI yourself. Very critical. What do you think of uh, Nurdin Haji and uh, George Kenyotti now? No, no, the, the former DCI, you know, I mean, he, he was a disgrace. The only thing he used to investigate was expired title deeds. Only. <laughs> only. If he hears there's a title deed that has expired mm. in current, mm. he sends all his boys there. And even their lawyers, you know, he arrested. So, I mean, land. He hears land and he used to lose his head. Hmm. I mean, that's why, have you heard of, you know, high, uh, I mean, that's why there was no murder case, property with violence. Hmm. All, there were no investigations. He completely forgot about it. Yes. And that's why, you know, now there's a lot of high profile investigation, murder cases. It's not that they spike in those offenses. It's only that the current, you know, DCIO concentrates on the right job. Because expired title leaders is the work of the Ministry of Lands. Are these two doing a good job? No, no, for the time being, I think, uh, I mean, the jury is still out on them. But for the time being, I think they're in office for about six, seven months, eight months, yeah. less than a year. Yeah. I think they're doing a fantastic job. Yeah. And uh, we need to support them. They need to have more, you know, resources, more capital, more money. They need to employ, more, like the DPP. I don't think he has enough lawyers to prosecute all this kind of, uh, of, of, of cases. Mm. He need to hire more people and he need even some cases, you need to get lawyers from the private sector in my view. I'm not looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> but there are certain cases yeah. he needs to get, you know. And it happens uh, in many countries, you know, some high profile cases. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with, you know, uh, getting the service of a senior counsel to lead his team. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you still have beef with the former TCI, don't you? You, st you try to stop his uh, yes, no yes, nomination uh, process. Absolutely. That, you know, I mean, you know, this is the th these are the mistakes Uhuru makes. When you send someone with a record of Mohoro to represent you in a foreign country, I will not be surprised if he engages in those kind of things when he's an ambassador in those countries and he's arrested. I mean, look at the unfortunate thing of our ambassador to Austria. Why yes, do you? Yes. Why do you send him? Why, do, why don't you wait? For the investigation to come to an end. But look, no, don't, don't blame the president for Wario that. May be, Wario may be meeting, you know, he may be meeting, he may be participating in a meeting yeah. when everybody hears that the Kenyan ambassador to Austria <laughs> has been recalled so that he can be charged. Yes. Or Interpol there's, is after there's him. There's all, there's also, I think, the ambassador to Russia. Correct. To Russia. Ekai. Yes, yes. So, but look, parliament vetted these people. In, uh, DCI investigated these people and they passed. No, and they passed. Parliament doesn't vet people. It's a conveyor belt. You know, the president puts you here, then he expects you to go there. There's no vetting in parliament. Parliament is dead. I'm surprised you talk about parliament. Have you, uh, look at today's paper. They were inspecting a toilet. <laughs> Today, <laughs> the speaker, yes. and I think 10 members were inspecting a toilet. Yes, to see what to happens. See, to see there. the size. And where the money can exchange in yes. that toilet. Inside a toilet. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's a disgrace. And all for just 10,000 shillings, apparently, oh, allegedly. Even less. Good Lord. <laughs> we'll come back and talk about the vetting because like you say, I mean, this is a disgrace to us. It's a disgrace. I mean, when they vet even, I mean, they vet someone like, I don't want to go back to the story of Mohoro, but they, what, do they, what have they vetted about him? We, I took a letter today, I told him, you know, personally, he tried to kill me. But there are so many Kenyans who disappeared during his tenure. 300, 400 people through extrajudicial killing. But those are, that's your allegations? Not my allegations. There are reports by the Kenyan Human Rights Commission. There are reports by Amnesty International. They are all there. Then someone with that record, His Excellency sent him a document to represent to the King of Malaysia and say that this is the best man I found fit to represent me, that's absolute disgrace.
Let's take a quick break. Come back. So much more ahead. The Grand Mullah is coming out guns blazing. <laughs> So much more talk about state of politics, referendum. Will there be one, Grand Mula? Don't answer now. Don't answer now. <laughs> Keep tweeting at Queen Anger Jeff, at Citizen TV Kenya. The hashtag is JK Live. JK Live takes a break. We'll be back in a moment.